Hi folks, here we come to the um, deep learning section of Big Data Applications Analytics. And this is the section mainly on medicine. It starts off with a tiny comment on telecommunications. And here we go. Telecommunications, well, we don't have much to say about that, as you'll see. So here we have some comments I extracted from Business intelligence about AI and telecommunication. And basically, it points out that this is a obviously a very successful industry in that it's enabled mobile phones. Um, it has a feature, it has a lot of data. There's not a lot of growth in the core of business, and it's not so obvious the businesses are very well set up to move out of their core businesses. These companies like uh, Verizon buy things, but whether they do a good job after they buy them is not so obvious to me. And uh, here we have a little plot of uh, mobile revenue between 2018 and 2025. And it's only 1.4% per year. That's uh, negligible compared to some other areas we just looked at, like self-driving cars and, and uh, things like that. And um, here we have mobile data usage, which is going to soar. But so is the technology with 5G eventually coming in. And uh, the problem is, of course, in uh, many areas like North America, Europe, um, the penetration is already very high, even for the world, 71. Um, Currently 67% and projected 71% in 2025 actually have cell phones. So that means the, the opportunity to grow is relatively small. And so AI is at least something they can do. Um, but there's nothing very exciting they can do with it. They can detect fraud better, uh, get an enhanced user interface which recognizes my desires immediately and somehow make it do a better job. But actually more of that is the Android phone, which they don't really control. So oh, sorry, I should say Android or iPhone um, phone, the, which um, they don't really control. All right, now we come to medicine. And medicine is a pretty interesting field because for a long time it's been perceived as the most important area where we can innovate in the area of AI and related areas. And bioinformatics is an incredibly um, high performing field. But the actual progress is not as great as in some other areas. There are no revolutions so far with AI. Whereas you could say in image processing and speech recognition, there's been a revolution. Even in self-driving cars, there's been a sort of revolution. It hasn't quite succeeded yet, but the progress, I think, is a little more tangible than in some of the medical areas. All right, so here is uh, here we're looking at diagnostics, which is part of the medical field, but probably one of the areas where AI is particularly interesting because it, it, AI is good at classifying. And what is diagnosis? It's classifying the state of the person. So you'd expect it to be good. And um, here, they, what can AI do? Well, it can um, save and people costs. Um, it can actually get the answer much faster in some cases, especially by pre-screening, so that the professionals only have to do a small number of, um, Im say, image, inspect images. Um, and, and then they're gonna be reduced costs coming from this. Hopefully it will make fewer errors, less malpractice claims. Ah, we're gonna sue AlexNet for screwing up. Hmm. No, well, uh, actually, so there are actually also increased malpractice claims if you have errors you can't understand. Because uh, one of the complaints about AI is, though, especially deep learning, is you don't know why it's making the prediction, and that's particularly worrisome in uh, in uh, diagnosis and medicine. So, reducing length of patient stays, of course, decreases costs have more patients, we can get iller. Um, then we can actually do a better job of screenings by just choosing which ones to do by, with AI and doing less uh, extreme screenings. 
and we'll just have improved outcomes. And um, as long as we have a contract which encourages us to do better, that's good. Um, so here are some sort of comments that uh, a report uh, made from uh, which I've listed here. And so AI is actually getting better and better at some diagnoses. It is clearly not universal because it is just not revolutionizing the world. Um, here we have a diagnosis of pneumonia with 33% fewer area errors, 22% greater accuracy than the previous case. But um, what else do we have? Well, we can do it faster. Um, that's say, especially true probably in image processing. Um, when we're looking at uh, MRI images and things like that. And the claim is that by 2025, we might save $150 billion, um, which has got uh, improved outcomes and decreased uh, treatment costs and lower malpractices. Um, notice malpractice uh, suits uh, were more than $600 million um, cost in 2017 just in Massachusetts, so it's a non-trivial cost. And um, of course, as we've already mentioned, the decreased labor costs, which um, we can do by, claim, or the claim is we're going to automate 40% of the hospital support staff. That sounds plausible to me that uh, a lot of the uh, manual, the monitoring and things, that can that's straightforward, uh, not even really AI, just uh, Processing data. Um, all right, so here we have some, these are more interesting diagnostic imaging. Uh, here we have head bleeding um, being analyzed by machine learning. Um, here we have an AI early warning system for sepsis in, in uh, identifying and saving. This is amazing, if true 5,500 deaths, it would be good to look into more of that. Good project for a student. Um, here we had an, in cancer, um, be able to look at the gene structure of everything and get an optimized uh, treatment. And computer vision just is uh, anything with to do with images is likely to be able to have an immediate impact because we know from our discussion of AlexNet and SuperNet and all these. Uh, uh, amazing new, uh, image systems, but their, their deep learning and AI has really made huge advances. And it's probably, and just as they are, do better than humans in ImageNet, they probably will, might be able to do better than humans in typical uh, uh, medical um, analyses. Well, we had this case here before about pneumonia, so that's just a repeat. And uh, but this is a new example of uh, just improved speed. These are the cases where you'd expect it to work because analyzing X-rays, which is an image-based case, should really go, be, be able to go very fast as long as you know what you're looking for. And so here we have a factor of 100 increase in performance. Um, here we want to. Um, reduce the number of uh, mammograms a radiologist must read by uh, if not being able to identify the problems, but identify the non-problems and only sending to the uh, radiologist the difficult cases. And as uh, diagnostic costs have 20% of salaries, then if we can improve utilization, that's a non-trivial effect. Um, so we, this particular report suggests that radiologists will still be needed but they actually have a better job because they will only be focused on more interesting images. Okay, if we look at diagnostic imaging, so this is the area where I think AI has had the biggest impact. And um, here's a survey of when how AI will be used. Imaging or diagnosis is thought of as being of a pretty important. I mean, genomics is claimed to be more important, although I say I'm not so certain genomics has had the impact that some people thought. Telemedicine, cybersecurity, these are all pretty reasonable things. Uh, cloud computing is obviously 
it's a sort of, in some sense, trivially essential because it's used by everything. But certainly directly, it doesn't do anything. It just uh, implements your algorithms. So anyway, if we come back to diagnostic imaging, then the point is that the, this, there are a lot of FDA approved uh, solutions in this area. And um, not only for cancer applications, just for eye systems. When I go to the eye doctor, they take all these images. And presumably, again, you can, probably not so difficult to make a, an analysis system which, um, which is competitive with a doctor, again, at least for the, the simple cases. Um, and of course, these, the, the impact of these is not just in the US, but in countries like India, where they just don't have any type of analysis. So these things are very promising for developing countries. Um, so here we just have the mayor. Okay, you see again the little like self-driving cars. In the in the initial decision, we will not deploy self-driving cars. We will deploy um, driver-assisted driving cars. And um, here we have these clinical decisions about CDS, and this allows uh, you know people to uh, doctors to be able to. Uh, um, Combine themselves with AI to make better decisions, and um, we also can. Uh, it points out here you can detect problems uh, in terms of uh, trends because the trends are going to be automatically detected, and um, we can avoid unnecessary readmissions and identify the really important things to do. Adverse drug reactions, that's probably more uh, DNA and genomics. You can identify which patients are, are safe to use which uh, treatment on. Uh, here we have the, oh, the computer is likely to do particularly well of, of, in what's called precision medicine. Targeting the optimal treatment for a particular patient. That's because that's just numerics and and hard work, and it's much easier for a computer to do than a doctor. Um, here, IBM Watson, which is in this sort of a disgrace, but it had the bright idea, I believe. It's a machine learning system trying to help doctors. It was probably overhyped, and is and it's no longer viewed as strongly, but it, had, it was not a bad idea. Um, and here we point out there's this uh, Intermountain Healthcare. Is using genomic structure to make uh, treatment decisions, and that, as we've actually noted before, increased uh, patients' uh, li lifetime. Uh, so, oncology, cancer care is likely to be the initially the a dominant application for AI power precision medicine because it's pretty hard to do for real doctors. And uh, at least we can get them to focus on the important images rather than unimportant images. Um, note this a large 776 million malpractice um, cost uh, between 2006 and 2015. Um, as of course, cancer get, becomes a larger fraction of the, uh, the mortalities as uh, the other prevent more preventable mortalities disappear. This is going to get more important. And people are willing to do genetic testing because it will make them healthier. I don't see why one wouldn't want to be healthier. And here it claims that 60% are willing. I'm not a bit surprised it's not uh, higher than that, in fact. But anyway, 60% is okay. And finally, we just have this interesting statistics is a um, couple of pictures over here. Over this picture is the Funding going into digital health, and um, these are the various deals, and we have uh, in billions, eight billion in 2018, but uh, 2019 is coming in at a similar but slightly lower value, and their trend is obviously up, although it may have leveled off, but it's still pretty impressive. And here we have. Um, an interesting statistics on 23andMe and Ancestry DNA. These are the number of millions of people who have been tested. So we now have 25 million 
um, genomes which have been analyzed. Of course, these companies, I think, only analyze a portion of the genome. Because we know it costs a thousand dollars to analyze a, a single genome these days and uh, and sequence it. Whereas uh, if you buy a 23andMe kit, it's sort of around a hundred dollars. And I assume ancestry is similar if they do similar things. All right, so we have a slightly mixed. This is the end of the discussion of medicine. Uh, we have some established areas which are making slow progress. That's because the relation, say, between genomics and and health is uh, slightly indirect and not very immediate. And then um, there are some sure wins like uh, uh, deep learning based pathology, but even that is not so trivial to actually. I mean, there was a problem already because real doctors didn't find it that easy to translate pictures into diagnosis. And so there may be some real problems that actually these, what were the data we're giving these deep if you give we give incomplete data, which is not uh, doesn't have the information to make a decision, you're not going to succeed. So we're going to do better, but uh, that better may not be what people want because they might think it's going to solve the problem. And it is possible that the reason that uh, pathology wasn't an overwhelming, the always able to predict uh, cancer type things, was because the data they were analyzing was just insufficient. Okay, that's it for. AI in medicine, uh, promising, highly active, but not, not quite the same jugulars as some of the other areas of AI.